Hey, what's happening, guys? All right. Guess what this is? I mean, well, you saw the video title. You know what it is. It's a jewel thief. It's an incredibly simple circuit. It consists of a transformer, a resistor, a transistor, and your LED. We all know Jewel Thief. We all know what it does. It takes extremely low battery voltage and boosts it up in order to light an LED. But I thought what we could talk about is the origins of the Jewel Thief and how it behaves. How does it boost the voltage up? What exactly happens there? So, first of all, the origins of the Jewel Thief are much older than you probably realize. They actually go back to uh, U.S. patent number 1949383, which is filed in 1930. And that was for, oops, sorry, touch the microphone. The Armstrong os oops, now I dropped that. The Armstrong oscillator, and it actually used vacuum tubes. But that's the first instance of this design. Now, it got a revival in the late 90s. Um, in the November 1999 issue of Everyday Practical Electronics, a fellow by the name of K or Z Kaepernick wrote an article called One Volt LED, A Bright Light. And that kind of brought it back. And then in 2002, a large Scottish fellow by the name of Clive Mitchell coined the term Jewel Thief. You guys know who Clive Mitchell is, right? That's Big Clive. So, how does it work? Well, let's talk about the circuit design. We have a bifilar wound transformer, basically a toroid with two windings on it. And I'm not going to go into how to wind it here. What I'm going to do is put it on the end of the video because I figure you guys probably already know how to do it. If you don't, it'll be at the end of the video and you can watch it. So our two windings come out. We have one side of winding number one here, one side of winding number two here, and right here, the other side of one and two are twisted together. So it doesn't matter which side we do this on. So we'll start with, uh, where are we starting? Right here in the center. So that's where our two windings are put together. This gets the positive from the battery. Then one side goes through this 1K resistor into the base of this 2N2222 transformer, turning it on and off. The other side goes to the collector and the LED is across the collector and the emitter of the transformer. The positive goes to the collector, the uh, cathode goes to the emitter, and then the emitter goes to ground. Now what I have this hooked up to is not a battery, but a power supply, which is standing in for a battery, and you can see we have 0.6 volts there at 40 milliamps. I can't really get it to come down too much lower milliamps. I'm trying. If I get down below 30, it just kind of switches off. So that's as low as I can go, 30 milliamps. So there we go. And there's our jewel thief. So how does it work? Well, basically it works by switching this transistor on and off very quickly. I mean, you guys probably already figured that out. So what happens is current will begin to flow through the secondary and the base emitter junction. And this causes it to switch on, and it switches on hard. Okay? Now, since the two windings are in opposite directions, this induces a voltage in the secondary winding, a positive winding, which turns on the transistor into its saturation region. Now, what happens is, when the coil cannot take any more charge, basically everything stops, the LED switches off, and we reset, we go back to zero. So, to try and put this all together, once the coil 
once the current in the coil stops increasing for any reason, the transistor goes into cutoff, the magnetic field collapses, and whatever voltage is stored in here is shot into our LED. Now, the frequency we're looking at here is around 300 or so kilohertz, and we can go and take a look at that on the scope. All right, let's look at this on the scope. We're going to probe the base. Okay, let me get a good connection. All right, there we go. So we have sort of a modeled square wave here with a uh, frequency of around 330 hertz. Now, if I play with the voltage here just a little bit between 0.6 and 0.9, you can see that the frequency remains relatively stable. So the voltage really has no play in the frequency whatsoever. Alright, so you've seen it on the scope. Now I've hooked up the meter here in volt mode. There's our ground. And just so you can see, if we probe the input voltage, we're getting 0.6 volts in. And then if we probe the output of our transformer, you're not getting that much more because that um, transformer is holding the current. You know, we can go over here and we can look at the uh, the base is at 0.49. What about our collector? Where's the collector at? 5.9. And of course, the emitter is going to be at zero because it's you know coupled to ground. Let's put this over in frequency counter mode. Let's see if we can get the uh, collector frequency here. So that's about 500k. And what about the base frequency? See, that's what we're seeing on the scope. Our base frequency is about 335 kilohertz. The reason we're seeing so much more on the collector over here is simply from the switching power supply. So there's our base, about 330 kilohertz, and if we want to see duty cycle, just about 50%, so that's a square wave. So I hope this gives you guys a good idea of the history and the workings of the Jewel Thief. I mean, it's just about as simple as a circuit can get. Your bifilar wound toroid, a resistor, a transistor. Oops, losing my ground. And your LED. That's about it. All right, I'm gonna attach how to wind this toroid to the end of this. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. I added a few more things to the store. Guys who live in Canada, I had no idea it wouldn't work there. I'm looking into it. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace. Start by getting about a meter of the wire. Fold it in half and take your open ends and pass them through the toroid. Get them set where you want. Then you're going to take the folded end and you're going to push it through the toroid like you're sewing on a button. Try and keep everything spaced as evenly as possible. Pull it tight. The tighter you can get it, the better the coupling will be. And simply go around the toroid winding it as best you can. Once it's all wound and you cut open the open end, put a big blob of solder on your soldering iron and burn off the enameling on the wires. That way we'll be able to get an electrical connection to it. Depending on the thickness of your wire, and I use 30 gauge wire here, it's going to take a few seconds on each wire to get down to the bare metal. If you don't get to bare metal, you're not going to have a connection. Don't worry about how pretty this is here because we're going to fix it later. 
Once that's done, we need to figure out which wires go to which winding. So take your multimeter, put it on there, and figure out which two wires give you a connection. There's two windings here. You're going to attach one end of one winding to the other end of the second winding and simply twist them together. It's that easy. Once you find your circuits, twist them together. Then cut them off evenly as possible. Use the soldering iron technique once again to melt the enameling off the wires. Pretty simple, just takes a few seconds. Once that's done, we're going to solder them onto some header pins. Pre-tin them first. Remember, solder flows where solder has been, so it's always best to tin, tin, tin. Then all we have to do is solder these puppies up. And our transformer, which is what we're making here, will be ready to go.